Welcome back to the Bitcoin Zodiac. Hope you're having a fabulous week. Um, happy new moon in Leo. I'm going to dive into that astrology a little later. We've got a lot going on in the markets um, the last couple of weeks and a lot going on in Bitcoin the last couple of weeks. Obviously, since our last episode, we have had the Bitcoin conference, which looked amazing. Um, there were lots of amazing speakers and um, keynote presentations throughout that conference. And I would definitely recommend that you check them out. Um, obviously, they were quite overshadowed by Donald Trump speaking at the event. And, you know, as we discussed in the last um, episode, we saw a bit of a move up to go and retest that 70K area. And, um, you know, leading into him speaking. And sadly, I think that he was a bit disappointing, actually, at the Bitcoin conference. But um, Robert Kennedy Jr. also spoke the day before and gave a really clear laid out plan of how he would integrate Bit how he would integrate Bitcoin um, if he was to become president. And um, he really showed up Donald Trump's knowledge or understanding of Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I think Donald Trump really fumbled the ball, to be honest. Um, I think he's going to look back on that and regret it a bit um, because the Bitcoin community is now quite a substantial vote base. And um, it's quite interesting to watch him. It's like watching someone be orange pilled in real time. Like he's gone from four years ago, he was completely anti Bitcoin and Bitcoin's a scam. And um, then he's come in to the phase of like, oh, can I, can I profit from this? Um, and, you know, for him, it's mainly profiting through votes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he is in four years time. Um, yeah. And see if he's fully orange pilled and has an understanding. I think the more concerning thing around that is that like his advisors and his um, his speech writers also didn't really have a firm, deep understanding of what Bitcoin is. Um, conflating it with crypto is not a cool thing to do at the Bitcoin conference. And the whole vibe of it really was that he was kind of confused about where he was. He didn't realize he was not at a Trump rally and he was actually at the Bitcoin conference. Um, so, yeah, I think that, as I said, I think he fumbled the ball on that. And um, yeah, I think Robert Kennedy Jr. was definitely the Bitcoin candidate. Um, but as we discussed in the last episode, you know, when we're, we're not looking for a political savior, politicians need Bitcoin more than Bitcoin needs politicians. And I think some of them get it and some of them are starting to get it and some of them don't get it at all. But um, yeah, I think net net the it, it's net positive for, for Bitcoin rather than having, you know, negative policies towards Bitcoin the to have politicians you know at least semi pro bitcoin um rather than creating policies that are trying to block bitcoin and trying to make it hard for bitcoin holders and things like that so i think it's a net positive but um since then we've had a lot of crazy things happening in the macro and this episode will really be mostly focused on the macro it will just be sort of interesting to see how bitcoin responds to these different things so First, we had the Bank of Japan raised their rates. And to put it in perspective, this is the second time in 20 years that the Bank of Japan have actually raised rates. So for the last 30 years, Japan, for the best portion of the last 30 years, Japan have really had zero interest rate policy. And um, this has actually created a huge global carry trade. So um, what that basically means is that investors could borrow yen at no cost at zero percent interest rate and then invest it globally and so for the first time as i said in two decades i think it's actually the second time in two decades japan increased its interest rates this last week um, by 0.25 percent and so this actually caught the markets really off guard i don't think anyone was really expecting them to do that and as a result of the increased interest rates, investors in that trade um, 
are now concerned that that money that they borrowed for free is no longer free. And so they're in the process of unwinding those trades and sending those funds back to Japan. So um, yeah, it, it is a pretty big deal. I know that a lot of people don't, um, I don't know, don't take what happens in Asia particularly seriously. It's always a focus on what's happening in the US, but actually um, both China and Japan are incredibly important to the US. And so what is happening with them is incredibly important for the global macro economy. Then we led into the Fed. Um, the Fed meeting, they did not change the rates. And, um, but we, I think the market really is expecting them to have their first rate cut at the next meeting, which is in September, on September the 18th. And um, some people don't think that they're going to cut rates at that time. Um, I, I'm not going to pretend to guess what they will do. I really think that they should have been I'm surprised they haven't cut sooner, to be honest, but um, they haven't. And so we just have to deal with what's happening and ride out what is happening. And so the interesting thing about the next Fed meeting on September the 18th is that that is actually the day after the lunar eclipse in Pisces. And it's also conjunct Saturn and Neptune. So um, it's looking that's looking pretty ugly, in my opinion. And we've had a lot of talk this week as well about the United States being in recession or potentially moving into recession, global recession, um, as the economic results were, were not great that were published. So there's been a big bleed out in crypto, in Bitcoin, in basically every market. Um, but in the long run, you know, it could be a net positive for Bitcoin um, with a with a weaker US dollar. That's that can be a net positive. So um the interesting thing is, which I touched on last episode as well, is like historically a rate cut is not automatically bullish. It's long-term bullish for Bitcoin or mid-term bullish for Bitcoin, but in the short term, it's usually bearish first, um, as it's pointing to weakness in the economy. Um, but it tends to be bullish as, you know, it's borrowing is cheaper. So, um, but I'm leaning more towards it being um, kind of bearish initially, because um, especially with that eclipse um, sitting there the day before. So let's see what that brings. That's in September. We've got a, we've got a lot to go through before we get to September. And we'll talk more on a deeper level about that eclipse um, in the coming episodes for sure. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to see the climate at the moment. The, the sentiment has certainly shifted and there's um, much more talk of recession and all of those kind of doomsday words. And um, the interesting thing is about the cycles or understanding the cycles is that we have like, first we have like the, the generational cycle, the secular cycles. And I personally believe that the creation of Bitcoin was the beginning of a new secular cycle, um, a digital cycle. And I th think that is the beginning. And then we sort of have the macro business cycle, which is really the debt and liquidity cycle. And then within that, we obviously have the four-year Bitcoin cycle. And then within that, we have the, the midterm sort of swing and the, the shorter term intraday or day trading um, cycles within those as well. And um, so the more tactical trading cycles. And so when we're looking at the more the shorter term time frames, we know that the market maker uses news events like the CPI and FOMC meetings and non-farm payrolls and any of that kind of news, they use those to pivot the markets. Um, but the larger sort of macro business cycle is not pivoted, is not affected by those um, sort of shorter term news events. But for the macro cycle to pivot, um, it usually comes alongside a larger global news event. So 
I don't want to say this to scare people for sure not, but I just want you to sort of recognize what you're looking at. If those things happen, like the last one was obviously COVID. I have no idea. I'm not even going to pretend to guess what the next could possibly be. Um, but just be aware that there probably is something coming, whether it's in the fight, whether it's globally financially, um, or if it is, um, politically or you know to do with war things like that those kind of major news events that shock the world kind of thing um they usually coincide with a fed pivot so just just to be aware of that i don't you know I, as i said i don't want to scare people but just to um yeah the macro kind of doesn't shift just because it's time to shift there's usually a catalyst and um you know there is a lot of civil unrest going on in different areas of the world throughout europe in ireland in england um it feels like it's brewing in the states as well and so i kind of feel to keep an eye on those sorts of things um i have no idea it may um it may have something to do with that i have a feeling it has it may have something to do with that and that will usually coincide with the Fed pivot. There'll be a massive crash because even with just a Fed pivot on its own, which I don't think has ever happened, um, they that it's usually it's a sign of weakness in the economy, and so it does um, turn people. It does scare people. It does scare investors, and it it makes people sort of go into cash or. Um, you know, more things that are seen as a flight to safety, like gold and now possibly Bitcoin as well. So, yeah, I think that all of these kind of moves are scary to observe or un unsettling to observe. But um, I think they're all long term bullish for Bitcoin, actually. So we just need to ride them out and um also see them as opportunities as well i'll get i'll get into that further into the episode but um i do have a sadly i do have a pretty bearish outlook for august um possible i'm not sure i think there will be some kind of global crisis or global news event um that happens maybe in august or september and um so yeah i say that to just to prepare you rather than um, to scare you. I mean, they're called black swans for a reason. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that is, when it would happen, um, but just be prepared that that may happen. And um, yeah, be prepared to also take advantage of the opportunities that that may create. So let's get into Leo season. Um, it's one of my favorite seasons, actually. I love me some fire signs, of course. Um, that Sagittarius in me just just loves the common ground of the fire signs. And so we're kind of transitioning from Cancer's nurturing, watery energy into Leo's vibrant fires. And um, on a personal level, it really symbolizes a homecoming and a coming home to our heart and our true selves. So the symbolism for Leo is obviously a lion. And around that is really like, courageous, bold, and very, very much heart-centered, like true to heart. And so it's time to kind of like lean into and embody those energies. So it's a time of real self-discovery and like fearlessly, courageously, and boldly embracing who we are and who we aspire to be. So Leo season also, despite all of the negative market, all of the red in the market, um, it invites us to really celebrate life and find joy in the small moments. So joy is really essential to healing and uncovering our authentic selves. It's like a gateway to our authentic selves where we can find our joy that's like directing us to what is authentically for us, if you will. And um, so that's really a strong theme of Leo season. There's always a scripture in the Bible that says, choose joy. And I've always kind of looked at that scripture and thought, well, that's easy to say, you know, yeah, okay, it's just a choice. I'll just choose joy. But a lot of people think that joy kind of happens to us when everything is good. 
And I would sort of say that's more happiness, whereas joy is actually something we step into, we choose and we embody. And I really believe that that scripture in the Bible was not a suggestion. It was actually a command that in all circumstances, no matter how bleak things look, um, that there is always a way for us to choose joy. And the reason that 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 is a command is because it actually lifts us to um, a higher level of consciousness and um, you know that's really important to do and definitely a key theme of this season so even if you are going through it um, I don't know what you're going through and I don't want to minimize any pain or stress that you are going through but the theme of this season is really to try and find joy in the small things and really go in the direction of your joy so it, embracing our joy allows us to share our truth without fear of rejection because it's almost the the purest form of expression when we're following our joy when we're following the things that truly light us up that's um that's our truest expression and it doesn't matter if we're rejected for that i think that it's much more painful to try and minimize who you are and try and be following what other people want you to be um and maybe still face rejection rather than being your authentic self, showing up as who you are, following your joy. And if people reject you, they reject you. They're not your people. And um, the people that are meant for you will truly find you. So that's really a strong theme as well for this season. And, um, you know, Leo is this fixed fire sign. So it really also this fire within us, it helps us maintain our inner vitality. And it reminds us that like true healing actually comes from within. It's not from external sources. And so it really encourages us to return to our heart's passions and um, let that be the fuel, let that be our life force. And um, yeah, so it's a strong theme. Prioritizing joy is a really strong theme. So definitely set some time aside to engage in activities that really uplift you and reconnect you to what you truly love so um calibrate your life to this like this is your moment to really prioritize that and get clear on that and um yeah we are in the full moon the sorry full moon new moon period so it's really a time that we you know it's the beginning it marks the beginning of the new cycle and it's a time to set intentions and so let your intentions be guided by that inner joy and let let that be the the guiding force the guiding light so the other sort of flip side of that is um it can be vulnerable to show up in the world as your true and authentic self but this leo energy is bold it's courageous and unapologetic so share your true self with the world even if it feels vulnerable and it's also like a very strong theme around leadership as well and so even when things are uncomfortable, are, do feel vulnerable, are fearful for you, it's like true leaders acknowledge those fears and they they use them for growth. So embrace um, any feelings of vulnerability as a sign of like alignment and alignment to your authenticity. So one of the other things with Leo, Leo season is really the idea that self-approval is paramount. So it's really transcending that need for external validation and finding um, some grounding in self-approval. So when you live authentically and true to yourself, it really fosters this deep self-love, acceptance and gratitude for who you are, for the beautiful being that you are. And um, so it's really a time to embrace self-approval and express yourself authentically and let your let your truth shine. And um, so that's really the theme of this season. And so on the 4th of August, we have the new moon in Leo. And as I said before, it marks the beginning of a new lunar cycle. And it's a time of new beginnings, fresh starts and setting intentions. So um Leo's a fire sign ruled by the sun, which symbolizes creativity, self-expression, leadership, and this boldness. It governs areas of life 
related to self-confidence, self-worth, individuality, and ambition. So this new moon really emphasizes creative self-expression, leadership, and taking bold initiatives. So it's really like your time to shine, embrace new ventures, and like showcase new talents even. So we're infused with the this atmosphere with confidence and enthusiasm. So really encouraging you and markets actually to take courageous steps forward. And that will become clearer as we go through the other aspects as it pertains to the market. So the, this Leo new moon can boost market sentiment, um, leading to sort of this period of confidence and optimism. We're seeing a lot of red in the market. And so, and there are also some other aspects that will sort of put a bit of a dampener on that optimism um, and potentially sort of neutralize that a little bit and also require you to keep that in check. Like, for example, we've had some, you know, a big bleed out in the markets. And so any sign of green may lead to like increased optimism and excitement in the market. But we need to keep that in check and look at where we are in the cycles um, and be pragmatic about things rather than getting too carried away in this optimistic season. So it can also, the new moon is always quite volatile. Um, I actually did expect probably a, a slightly larger move up into the new moon and then sort of a more of a downturn afterwards. But as I said, we do have some other aspects that are um, that are sort of indicating that the 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 highs are, are not uh, are not coming just yet. As I said in the last episode, um, you know, even though I saw some positive aspects for the last period, um, I did say that I didn't think we would be flipping any all all time highs anytime soon, and I still um, definitely don't see that yet. So um, yeah, we can expect some volatility, but I would just again like look at that with some caution because we will always even if we are in a like larger down move on like the higher time frames on the lower time frames any spike up could you know is a is is a move up on the lower time frames for day traders maybe but um how that prints on the higher time frames is really like an, a retracement to the upside before continuing down. So just keep that in perspective and yeah, just be very pragmatic as we walk into this season for the next month or so, a little bit more than a month. Um, but also Bitcoin with this new moon, Bitcoin is viewed as a symbol of financial innovation and obviously decentralization. So it does really align well with Leo's qualities of boldness and leadership. So um, yeah, it will be interesting to see, as I say, as there's major bleeds in the traditional markets, um, how Bitcoin responds and um, how, how people are viewing Bitcoin. I think it will also be interesting to see the media's perspective on Bitcoin as well during this time, because Leo's influence might draw increased attention to Bitcoin. So um, how are they going to discuss it? Are they going to discuss it as a flight to safety um, or are they going to view it as a risk on assets? So that remains to be seen. But again, it could draw some this Leo energy could draw some attention to Bitcoin. It is also Bitcoin's rising sign. So um, yeah, it will be interesting to see what the next couple of weeks, how the next couple of weeks play out. So as we are in this Leo season, Leo new moon, it is a time for boldness and courageous action. And um, as we see a lot of red in the market, that causes a lot of people to be incredibly fearful. Whereas really the theme of the season and also the theme of this new moon is really identifying areas um, for investment opportunity. And so while everything is bleeding, instead of panicking, I would invite you to embody that bold Leo lion energy and um, see the opportunities in the downside when everybody else is fearful. The new moon also forms a square aspect to your 
to Uranus in Taurus. So that can introduce some unexpected financial disruptions and sudden changes. So just prepare for market surprises, sudden shifts in sentiment, sudden news events, those sorts of things. And that's sort of one of the, th the aspects that I'm referring to as could be putting it a dampener on that like vibrant, expansive Leo energy. Um, we do also have a trine to Chiron in Aries, which is actually a harmonious aspect. And I'll talk more about Chiron later on in the episode. Um, but the but the trying to Chiron in episode uh, in Aries does suggest like an opportunity for healing and growth. So there'll be more of a theme for that later on. And um, so financial markets may benefit from like innovative solutions to previous issues. And it will be we'll be looking for leadership in this time and leadership in this area. So um yeah leadership initiatives that like address past challenges so and we also have the 4th of august to the 28th of august we have mercury retrograde in virgo and during leo season so mercury retrograde occurs three or four times a year and is an apparent backward motion of the planet mercury from Earth, our perspective on Earth. So when Mercury stations ret retrograde in Virgo during a new moon in Leo, it's a powerful opportunity for reflection and refinement. Um, Mercury retrograde does usually get a bit of a bad rap. It's traditionally associated with communication breakdowns, technical issues, travel delays, and things like that. But it's also not a time to be feared it's really is not none of us no astrological aspect should be feared we should recognize that all of these aspects even if they are slightly uncomfortable or disruptive to us um, are all part of life and um, we should try to embrace them and try to lean into the energies that they bring so instead you should focus like it's a chance to slow down. It's a chance to be introspective. It's a chance to reassess and sort of to make meaningful adjustments. So if you've been feeling really rushed or overwhelmed, this retrograde is giving you that opportunity to pause, to refocus on what truly matters to you. So um, Mercury retrograde often shifts the energy of communication inwards. So it's an ideal time to explore what you genu genuinely want to create in your life. So reflect on the intentions that you wish to set under this Leo new moon and consider if there are any patterns that you need to reevaluate or emotions you need to process to write clear and purposeful intentions. So really as well, something that I want to clarify because of this mercury retrograde and this new moon it's really a time to be setting intentions from your heart from the purest part of you um because manifestations and intentions set from from a place of ego um, even if you do manage to manifest those things, they're not going to serve your highest good and they may eventually become a block or a problem for you in the future. So it's really a time to be tuning into your heart and really setting intentions from that heart space. During the Mercury retrograde, you do want to be mindful of how you express yourself and take time to listen carefully and also express yourself um, very clearly and consciously. And you also want to be taking the time to listen to yourself as well. So misunderstandings can very easily occur during this time. Um, and so you want to come from a perspective of awareness. We know that we're coming into this period of time. So we want to have some patience and clarity. And these are really essential tools for effective communication during this time. So Mercury retrograde in Virgo coupled with the Leo new moon really invites you to pause, reflect and recalibrate. Virgo is an earth sign ruled by Mercury and so it represents practicality, detailed oriented, detail oriented analysis 
and also a focus on improvement and organization. So when Mercury retrogrades in Virgo, it really emphasizes this revisiting, reviewing and refining like existing structures and plans. So by taking this time to assess and refine your goals, you can really harness the energy of this time. This is what I'm talking about. And I think we're kind of being forced to experience this collectively as well um, to, to sort of go back and reassess and re refine as well um, of like maybe mistakes or errors in the past. So really trust in your ability to turn inward and really listen to your heart and emerge with renewed clarity and purpose like that's the focus of this um this new moon in leo so from a bitcoin perspective this period really encourages like an analytical reassessment um of your investments so it's a time to really reevaluate strategies review details and correct any overlooked issues Virgo's influence brings a focus on efficiency and practicality, and so it highlights this need to streamline operations and eliminate unnecessary expenditures or inefficiencies in your strategies. And so I think what this is sort of saying to me or speaking to me is really this is a time to be focused on the fundamentals. Why are you in Bitcoin? Because we may be entering a period that the outside world and even your own charts are going to be screaming at you saying, why, why are you investing in Bitcoin? And I really want you to dive into that and really find your own conviction in that. Again, that courage, that boldness of Leo, find that conviction within yourself rather than looking to the external to validate your choices. Um, obviously in a very pragmatic way, um, but really focusing on the fundamentals of Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is, why it was created, um, digital scarcity, self-custody, and um, decentralization and security. And so leaning into those aspects and really finding that conviction based on your own ideas, not just because someone on YouTube told you to. So as a digital currency as well, Bitcoin is really susceptible to market sentiment and speculative behavior. So this combination of Leo's new moon, um, the enthusiasm of Leo's new moon and Mercury's retrograde, um, the caution of Mercury retrograde can lead to like some pretty erratic price movements. So we can expect some volatility during this time. And as I said before, we have this enthusiasm coming through Leo, but we also have the kind of chaos in communication that is coming through like with Mercury retrograde, this, this invitation to look inwards possible glitches in anything technology related and communication about technology. Um, and so we kind of have this, this mix of energies that is, is sort of kind of seem opposed to each other. Um, so we'll, we'll probably see that reflected in the price as well. Um, but the retrograde in Virgo also will probably prompt investors to correct any hasty or impulsive decisions made during the excitement of the new moon. And so again, this can lead to corrections in Bitcoin's market price. And um, what that what that looks like on the charts, as I as I was sort of leaning into before, is like on the lower time frames, it's like these big what looks like big moves up, but really on the higher time frames, they don't really print as anything significant. They generally like print a higher low or a retest of an EMA, something like that, or tapping into a fair value gap, some imbalance in the market, and they're really a retracement on the down move for the further down move down. So you definitely wanna keep that in perspective at this time and don't see any of the movements or um, reversal signals that you will see on the smaller timeframes as like big reversal signals for the market. I don't, I don't see that coming for, for a little bit actually. So with Virgo's emphasis on detail, um, really, as I said, focus on Bitcoin's fundamentals and also the technical technological developments and also the developments that we've seen over the last couple of years 
um, in terms of adoption, in terms of acceptance, in terms of perception, and really focus on these things because a lot of these crazy, scary market moves are also to scare you out of the market and to get you to sell your Bitcoin. Um, and you just don't, you don't want to do that. Don't be scared out of the market. You want to see these times as opportunities. And um, I really want to encourage that as well at this time is that um, I think that the next couple of months, August, September, are probably going to be the last opportunity to be able to accumulate Bitcoin under the previous, the all-time highs of the previous cycle. So I could be wrong, but um, that's kind of what I'm seeing in the charts and kind of what I'm seeing in the astrology as well. So um, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a bumpy ride. It is going to take some courage and it is going to take some boldness to take advantage of those opportunities. But that's really the, you know, the best times to take those opportunities. So it's not all bad. Um, as I said before, even when you are, we are, I am kind of like overall bearish, um, at least for August and the early part of September. But um, it doesn't mean that there aren't there aren't retracements to the upside during that time. And on August the 7th, we have um, the sun sextile Jupiter. So this aspect is a harmonious aspect and it does facilitate opportunities, cooperation and positive outcomes. So it represents ease and flow between the energies of the celestial bodies involved. So the sun and Jupiter. So the sun represents the core of our identity, vitality, confidence, and willpower. And in, us, in astrology, it also symbolizes authority, leadership, and the drive to shine and express oneself. Jupiter is also the planet of expansion, growth, and abundance, and also optimism. So it governs higher learning um, opportunities and financial prosperity. So it represents the potential for success and good fortune. This aspect enhances confidence, optimism, and encourages growth and expansion in personal and financial matters. So it's an it's a period of increased positivity and belief in potential. And so, um, yeah, in amongst all the darkness, you will see these periods of light and um, positivity. And um, this, you know, the sextile, the sun, Jupiter sextile is a powerful astrological alignment, and it really does foster growth, optimism, and financial opportunities. So you kind of do want to be seizing those opportunities. And it will be a little bit of a reprieve from the, the rest of the sort of bearish sentiment um, that we're seeing for August. Another really interesting aspect that's not actually included in financial astrology or traditional astrology is the Lionsgate portal. And so this is more to do with the way ancient Egyptians um, viewed astrology, but I still think it's a really important thing to note as it can be a really powerful time. So the Lionsgate portal opens annually from the 26th of July to the 12th of August. And during this period, the earth and the sun align with Sirius, um, which is the spiritual sun and the galactic center, which is the core point around which the Milky Way revolves. So as Sirius comes closest to the earth, it rises in the Eastern sky alongside the sun and the Leo constellation, creating like quite a powerful cosmic event. So the ancient Egyptians designed their calendar around this alignment when Sirius, known also as Dog Star or Blue Star, rose with the sun. So they celebrate the Lionsgate portal for its magical and transformative powers. So this event coincided with the rise of the and the overflow of the Nile River, which again symbolized to them abundance and fertility. So the pyramids of Giza and the Great Sphinx um, were constructed in alignment with Sirius and Orion's belt and the sun during the Lion's Gate. So it's believed that the Great Sphinx keeps the portal open, allowing transformative light codes to reach Earth and elevate humanity. 
pretty epic, I think. Um, the Lion's Gate also brings energetic templates for the evolution of human consciousness, and it introduces higher frequency vibrations that interact with our energetic body. And this helps us ascend um, to new levels of consciousness and awareness. So um, it brings it brings to us information for evolution transmitted from the galactic center and amplified by Sirius, and it holds potent knowledge for humanity's growth and evolution. Um, the portal also serves as a gateway to higher consciousness, and it really enables humans to expand into new dimensions of existence. So the alignment of Sirius, the sun, and the earth reaches its peak on August 8th, and that is actually celebrated as the Galactic New Year. So on this day, the transmission of knowledge from the Galactic Center and Sirius is its strongest. And the numerology of eight represents this infinite loop signifying eternal cycles of learning and growth. So the knowledge available during Lion's Gate um, is pretty mystical in its own right, actually. It's been shared, forgotten, and then rediscovered across the universe, representing keys to cosmic understanding. So we really want to tap into that energy during this time. The Lionsgate opening also really opens this opportunity to release old patterns inherited throughout generations. So such as fear or shame or any kind of limiting beliefs that are really brought down ancestrally. So it facilitates the cleansing of our energetic DNA and awakening us to new possibilities and realities. So this portal encourages us to challenge outdated patterns and recognize whether our actions reflect our truest selves or are merely conditioned responses. So this obviously ties in with the themes of the Leo new moon of Leo season as well, and that introspection of Mercury retrograde. So through conscious awareness, we can transcend these old patterns and embrace our authentic selves. Um, so yeah, we wanna, we wanna really be checking on our behavioral responses or our thought patterns and really kind of like viewing them as the observer and really recognizing like, is this really coming from me or is this a conditioned response? And so this is the perfect time to do that and to release anything that isn't from you. Um, so it encourages breaking free from layers of conditioning and expressing the truest essence of your soul. So during this time, you want to establish daily routines during this Lion's Gate opening to really ground yourself and align um, to clarity coming from these energies. So even if this sounds kind of crazy to you and a bit woo-woo to you, and you're like, Claire, I just want to know if Bitcoin's going up or down, um, you know, I would really invite you to, to just be open to more intuitive downloads to different ways of thinking and to different ways of being um, during this time, because that's what this portal is all about. It's receiving these, these energies. And so, um, yeah, even if you don't really believe in that, just put that aside for a moment and go, what if this were true? Like, how would I respond if these were true? Can I find even a little bit of openness to the possibility that this is a portal and there are these different downloads and energies that are available to me. Um, can I be willing to receive those? And that's really the energy of that time. So really set time aside for journaling about any personal in insights that come through that time, particularly related to ancestral patterns and, and also for visions of the future. So spend time in the morning sunshine, absorbing the light codes and being open to flashes of ins inspiration and insight. Embrace the idea that everything during this time has meaning and that it's aligned with raising your consciousness and ascending to a higher frequency. So just allow for that. It's it's really a state of allowing and receiving. So it's, it's not a, a, a state of doing it's it's really a state of being and allowing so the next aspect that we have um 
is Mars square Saturn. So Mars in Gemini, square Saturn in Pisces. And that's on August the 15th. So we have Mars, which is the planet of action, drive, and ambition. And in Gemini, Mars influences communication and intellectual pursuits and adaptability. So this placement encourages thinking, multitasking, and exploring new ideas and opportunities. So Mars in Gemini can bring this restless energy, which I think we will see reflected in the markets and, you know, really pushing for rapid changes and, and new ventures. However, this can also lead to like impulsive decisions and kind of a scattered approach if you don't manage this energy properly. And I can kind of see, I can kind of see that already starting to play out in the charts. So we've seen these down moves, we're seeing this, you know, lots of bad news, um, when it comes to financial markets, talks of recession, a lot of fear mongering, and it can like lead you to number one, your first reaction is like, when is this over? And when, am, when are we getting out of this state? But also it can kind of like lead to impulsive decisions like, oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm selling everything. Or, um, you know, a more scattered approach of like, oh, we're, we're going up a little bit. I've got to jump in. I've got to buy now. It's my last opportunity. No, we don't want to be approaching anything during that during this time with that kind of energy we want to be very calm we want to be very precise we want to be very intuitive we want to be very calculated and um and thoughtful about any action we take during this time um Saturn also represents structure, discipline, and responsibility. So in Pisces, Saturn focuses on emotional depth, intuition, and the need to balance dreams with reality. So this really speaks to me very clearly that, you know, something that I've kind of been hinting to for a long time is that, you know, realistically, we we don't have any economic reality in our financial system. And so there is gonna be this period of correction and recalibration um, because we need to balance those dreams, those fantasies, those illusions with reality. And um, I think we, like, I think that's, we are seeing that in the markets and we are seeing that in the economic data that is coming out. Um, you know, at some point you have to pay the piper. And um, yeah, I think that that's coming. I think that's all I'll say on that. Um, Saturn and Pisces can also create challenges in maintaining clarity and discipline. So you're going to have to pay extra attention. As I said, these times, like especially if you're looking at the markets every day and all you're seeing is red and you're looking at financial news and all you're seeing is doom and gloom, this can really be distracting and really like sort of knock you off balance. And you really want to be just looking at the truth and the reality of what there is. And so, um, yeah, you want to be able to ground dreams and visions into practical plans. And so this square aspect occurs when two planets are like are 90 degrees apart and it does create a tension and friction between their energies. So this aspect often brings challenges that require effort and determination to overcome. So this alignment highlights the clash between Mars's desire for quick action and Saturn's need for caution and responsibility. So it can lead to frustration, delays and the necessity for strategic problem solving. So the Mars Saturn square may introduce a period of increased caution and hesitation in the financial markets. I can see this period of time being a, a time where the fear and greed index sort of flips towards like quite peak fear. Uh, like we might face some obstacles or delays in executing our plans and, you know, the, the desire to be a little more conservative. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's a balance between between being conservative and being fearful and um, being conservative is up and calculated is absolutely necessary during this time. But being fearful to take action is not. So um, yeah, market participants may may experience frustration due to slow progress 
or unexpected hurdles. And this can result in a lack of confidence and, you know, again, increased market volatility. And as I said, I think it's going to be sort of peak fear time. Um, but this aspect encourages discipline and careful analysis, highlighting the importance of strategic planning and risk management um, with your investment decisions. So Bitcoin, of course, is known for its volatility. We actually love the volatility in Bitcoin, but it may in experience increased pressure under this aspect. So the tension between Mars's impulsive energy and Saturn's caution may lead to pretty um, sharp price, price fluctuations, especially on those lower time frames. So there's a potential for price corrections for sure. And, um, you know, as, as investors reassess their positions and navigate the challenges presented by this aspect. So as I said, these kind of macro um, scenarios that are playing out, I think are gonna really bring some caution into the market and bring some fear into the market and people are gonna be reassessing their positions. Um, but with that, that also brings opportunity. So um, again, like I wanna encourage you to tap into that Leo, have confidence in your own conviction, have confidence in your own technical analysis and be able to take those opportunities as they present themselves. So um, yeah, with Mars, um, in Gemini, Square, Saturn, and Pisces, it really present. It is a it is a challenging astrological alignment, and it can impact financial markets and Bitcoin's price. And I, I do expect it to. Um, interestingly enough, looking at the markets, I think it was maybe two episodes ago. I discussed the liquidation levels of fifty around fifty one k. And um, I was really shocked, actually, that we didn't tap into them. I think we we tapped into 53 or something like that. And um, I was pretty shocked, actually, that we didn't go for those liquidations at that time. But again, don't be surprised. They're still sitting there. And so don't be surprised if they're taken during this time. And I don't say that to scare you. I'm not saying that we definitely do get down there. We could even go lower than that during this time. But um what I will say is that's not necessarily even a, a buy time. Like I'm not saying set limit orders at 51K. There's also an imbalance in the market between 50, around 52 and 50. And so that liquidation level sits right at that center line. So that is a really juicy looking um, spot for the market makers to bring bring the market back to. So what I, the reason I'm saying those levels to you is like, if we do get down to those levels, don't let that scare you. Um, we, yeah, we could even go lower than that. I'm, I'm not going to lie, but, um, but I'm, as I said, it's not necessarily a, a buy signal, but it, it's an area that the market could be brought back to. And you really want to have a look at the market structure um, when we're coming into that area and um, what kind of candles it's printing and um, does it look like it's going to be an area that's setting up for reversal? Where are we in the cycle um, when, you, when you're looking at those on all time frames? And as I said, with this aspect, it's really encouraging you to be analytical. So you want to lean on your technical analysis skills as well to be able to make some informed decisions at those points. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is really interesting to me. And I think it just, but this episode is kind of negative. I'm not going to lie. It's not, it's not full of great news. Um, and the markets and are, are, are not looking great either. As I said, I've really focused more on the macro sentiment and really it, it sometimes is difficult to read like how Bitcoin will respond itself in these times. And quite often you will see initially this bearish move, but long-term we're, we're bullish for Bitcoin because of what it represents. And also the problems that are created in the, that have been created in the market that are causing these terrible economic reads that are, you, you know, causing all of these things. Um, Bitcoin fixes this like this is the point of Bitcoin this is why Bitcoin was created was to was to return us to sound money was to bring back the integrity of money 
and restore the integrity of money. And so long term, we're bullish on Bitcoin for those reasons. Um, so it's really being very clear on what what time frame am I trading and what um what is my long-term perspective for these investments? Now, if 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 your time horizon is the next month, then you know, then it, it's it's bearish. But if your time horizon is indefinite <laughs> um or is even the next the, the next couple of years, then we're still really bullish on Bitcoin for those very reasons. And this next aspect I'm going to talk about this next retrograde that I'm going to talk about is going to bring some clarity to that. So we have Chiron in retrograde, which started on the 26th of July, and it's actually re in retrograde until the 30th of December. So this Chiron really offers a time, Chiron retrograde really offers a time of reflection and healing. And Chiron is often referred to as the wounded healer. And it's an asteroid that represents our deepest wounds, but also our greatest potential for healing. And when Chiron goes retrograde, it can bring those wounds to the forefront, allowing us to face and transcend them. So when we look at this from a macro market perspective, how I view that is that um, our greatest wounds, we never recovered from the financial crisis in 2008. We basically put a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. And so, but also, so it, it's, it represents our deepest wounds. So say that the, the decisions made around the financial crisis and that wound of the financial crisis in 2008, but what was birthed out of that was Bitcoin. And this shows us our greatest potential of how we can heal. And so um, I think that this period of time, this Chiron retrograde is bringing up these deep wounds um, that were never properly healed in the markets and it's giving us an opportunity to face them and transcend them. So from a personal level, this period, again, it's a retrograde. So it encourages looking inward and it's really asking you to confront unresolved pain, traumas and vulnerabilities. So it's an opportunity to understand how past wounds affect our current behaviors and relationships. And again, applying that to the market, it's an opportunity to understand how these past wounds affect our current situations. So Chiron retrograde emphasizes self-healing and personal growth. It's a time to embrace the journey of healing rather than seeking quick fixes. No more band-aids over bullet wounds. Um, and I think it's an interesting aspect as well, because when you think of physical, like a physical wound, if if you've if you've been injured and then there's a period of physio to be able to that you need to go through for that to, to to get regain mobility for example say you've had a rotator cuff operation um you go through the the operation and then there's a period of healing and there's also a period of physio which is actually really really painful but you have to go through that pain to be able to regain that mobility and heal properly. You have to heal consciously. And sometimes it's it's uncomfortable, it's painful, it hurts. And so I feel that we're probably going to be, go we're going through that kind of period right now. And um, it this Chiron retrograde period does introduce a very unique energy that can, you know, influence the financial market. So it's, as I said, it's the wounded healer. And in astrology, it's associated with healing, introspection and addressing unresolved issues. So um, there are a lot of unresolved issues in our financial markets. And um, the Chiron retrograde is a time to focus on healing and introspection and invites individuals and market participants and the markets themselves to reflect on past experiences and address unresolved issues that may impact our current scenario. 
So Chiron's retrograde phase emphasizes revisiting these past lessons and applying them to our current situations and allowing for greater understanding and growth. Now, do I have faith that the gatekeepers of our current financial system are going to do that? No, I, I don't. But we can do that personally and we can revisit the reasons for inflation, the reasons for all of these different things, the reasons that we're funding the, the proof. proof of weapons system. And um, we can make a choice to revisit those past wounds and learn those lessons and look at where how we want to resolve them in our own lives and um, how Bitcoin resolves those issues and move forward with understanding and growth from that perspective. So the introspective nature, of course, of Chiron retrograde can lead to cautious market sentiment and investor, investors might be more inclined to like reevaluate their strategies and make adjustments based on past experiences. So, you know, maybe we maybe have some new people orange pilled at this time and we're like and they really start looking under the hood of the way that our financial federal reserve system ruled federal reserve ruled system works and operates and maybe they start to make adjustments to their investment strategy and sort of say you know what maybe I want to self-custody some bitcoin I just had a really great interview with Dinny which will be available at the end of next week and um Dinny Collins from Bitcoin with Dinny and he's very focused on retiring on Bitcoin and having a strategy of number one, retiring early, or also hedging your current retirement plans with Bitcoin. And so maybe people will start to look at things like that in the, from that perspective. So this period may highlight the need for healing and restructuring within financial systems. Um, and markets could see more of a focus on sustainability, ethics, and long-term viability basically and that's why i can say okay all of these things i think are short-term bearish for bitcoin but re in the reality we're long-term bullish and i i'm actually even mid-term bullish um it's really i think as i said before i think that this this month and um september is looking a little bearish um and but i think that we will move through as we focus on the sustainability of our financial system, ethics, the return to fairness, to fair money, to sound money, and restore the integrity of money um, for long-term growth and, and sustainability. Um, because Bitcoin is highly speculative and an innovative asset, Bitcoin can be quite sensitive to shifts in market sentiment and the introspective um, energies like Chiron retrograde, Mercury retrograde. So investors may reflect on Bitcoin's past performance and future potential during this time. So viewing it in that way and bringing in that wisdom also from um, Saturn, the Mars-Saturn conjunction of looking at the fundamentals, looking at, and then the Virgo element, looking at the details. So this is all painting a picture and it's all kind of working together to um to create that um that way forward and so Chiron's ret retrograde encourages us to focus on long-term growth and sustainability and it aligns with bitcoin's potential as trans as transformative financial asset so investors may seek to align their strategies with bitcoin's long-term vision um, and i think that that's really the focus so we have a lot of wounds in our current financial system a lot of wounds that have that are wounds from the past that were never addressed properly, that were never fixed, that we never healed from. And, um, you know, the, this Chiron energy, this wounded healer energy also reflects our greatest opportunity for healing and growth and so and transformation. And I believe that that's what Bitcoin represents. So use this time to reflect on past lessons and apply them to your current strategies for growth and success. Um, make sure you are aware of news events and things like that, up to date on things that are going on within Bitcoin, but also in the global macro perspective. Um, as I said, I do think that this, if there was ever a time during this year 
to see some kind of crisis, we're coming into that period. So just be aware that, that there is the potential for that. And as always, just keep your eyes firmly focused on long-term growth and and sustainability, sustainability in your financial decisions. Like, let's not forget why we came here and, um, you know, align with Chiron's transformative energy. So really by embracing the energies of Chiron retrograde, we can make thorough financial decisions that support our growth and success in the ever evolving financial landscape. So, yeah, I think that that's the energy of the season. It's not like, yeah, Bitcoin to the moon. That's that's not where we're at. But um, I think there's going to be a period of time for people that are focused on the finan the fundamentals of Bitcoin to really see opportunities in this time when other people are scared. And um, I'm I'm not discounting the fact that there probably are going to be events that may scare us um there is the potential for that for sure but um we need to yeah stay grounded and remember why we came here and um stay humble and stack sats have a wonderful leo new moon peace love and bitcoin